Keep the change. Roadhouse. The new Roadhouse movie is out and it's pretty good. I like the original film quite a bit, but this new one is almost just as good. It's not perfect though, and like the original film, it has quite a few problems. And it has one big flaw that will prevent the new Roadhouse from becoming an all time classic like the original. The best part about this movie is without a doubt the action scenes. Doug Lyman is a very experienced action director with movies under his belt like The Born Identity, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and especially Edge of Tomorrow and his fight scenes in this film are a lot of fun. They have great choreography, they're framed in a way where you can see everything clearly, and I was really surprised at how good the sound design was for these fights. <laughs> And the film also does some really creative things. There's a part in the film where we're in the first person POV of one of the characters who's getting the snot beaten out of them, which is pretty neat. And there's plenty of other cool things like that to keep the action fresh. I thought Dalton was a pretty cool character. He's very different than the Swayze version, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't match Patrick Swayze's natural charm and charisma, nor do I think anyone could. So I thought it was wise to make his Dalton a little darker of a character. His niceness is just a facade to hide all his repressed anger and I found it really fascinating to watch him deal with the ramifications of his anger as well as him trying to prevent his anger from taking over again. The film also showed us Dalton's past instead of just telling us which is what the original film did and I think it was a good addition to the story although I did have one issue with it and I'm gonna give a very minor spoiler. I assumed Dalton was kicked out of the UFC because he ripped someone's throat out something the character did in the original which became iconic but no that doesn't happen. And there's no throat ripping in the movie at all. What's up with that, man? How are you gonna make a Roadhouse movie without throat ripping? It's like doing a Kung Fu Panda movie without Kung Fu, or a Twilight movie with good acting. And I'm not gonna spoil the ending to the movie, but I didn't think it did a good job with concluding his story. I thought it was kind of a weak ending, but overall, I think Jake Gyllenhaal did a really good job. He definitely made the character his own. The villains in this movie are kinda interesting. Ben Brandt is a boring, young, trust fund kid, and we've seen this character archetype a bunch recently, even just a couple months ago in The Beekeeper, and he's not nearly as threatening or interesting as Wesley was in the original. And a few of the goons are really funny and memorable. One of them gets eaten by an alligator which is insane and then there's conor mcgregor as Knox. he seems to be the most controversial part of this movie some people think he's terrible but you know what i actually enjoyed him in the film quite a bit he's so funny he adds so much cheese and he's so freaking irish and he's for sure a physically intimidating enemy and i don't think there's a single frame of this movie where he does have a big smile on his face honestly it got kind of creepy at moments for one way or another this performance will be remembered this film also made a number of other changes to the original for starters it's no longer set in the back roads of missouri it's set in the florida keys and this new location feels very genuine and lived in locations like the bookstore dalton's boathouse or the roadhouse itself are really great at fully realizing this new setting and the vast oceans tropical trees and sandy beaches make for some vibrant backdrops for these characters to interact in and i really like the people who live here frankie who is the owner of the roadhouse is really funny at times and has some interesting conversations with dalton there's some memorable characters who work at the roadhouse as well and ellie is a pretty solid love interest this movie is a lot of fun it has great action a fairly interesting story and fun characters but this film made one mistake that will forever haunt it and prevent Roadhouse 2024 from being as fondly remembered as the original. And that's the fact that this film is a streaming exclusive. Oh no. <laughs> now, I like streaming. It's a very helpful tool. But films that are streaming exclusive tend to be very forgettable. There's just something about sitting in a movie theater or popping in that disc that makes movies really stick with me. I have a binder full of movie tickets that I sometimes look at and remember the most obscure films. Does anyone remember The Goldfinch? Because I do. I saw that movie in a movie theater and it was super boring, but I remember that experience. I won't remember watching Roadhouse on my computer in my home office in the middle of the day. And I mention this because Roadhouse going to streaming was a big controversy a little bit ago. According to reports, the producers offered Doug Liman two options, a budget of $60 million and the film gets a theatrical release. <laughs> or a budget of $85 million and the film goes straight to streaming. He took the second option and was still fighting for a theatrical release. He was even so upset about the movie going to streaming that he did not attend the premiere at South by Southwest. I'm not gonna defend Doug Lyman's professional decisions, but I do think it's sad that this had to be a decision. Roadhouse deserved to be seen on the big screen 
And I'm really sad that it couldn't be. $25 million is a lot of money to people like you and me. But in the movie business, it's not that much. But it was the difference between sending this movie to theaters or sending it to streaming. And because of that, it was also the difference between Roadhouse being a memorable update to a fun classic film and being an instantly forgettable remake that may or may not get deleted forever like other streaming exclusives. And I just have to hope that at some point, Roadhouse 2024 at the very least gets a Blu-ray release. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch one that doesn't end on such a bitter note, click here to watch my review of Doom Part 2, the best movie of the year and possibly the greatest sequel of all time. Or if you're in the mood for something different, click here to watch my video where I explain why Superman the movie is a perfect comic book film. Yeah, those are two good videos. You should click on one of them. You'll be happy, I promise.